want to talk to you today about how we represent chemical changes and physical changes symbolically. And that's going to be using things that we call chemical equations. So what I would encourage you to do before anything else, get yourself some paper and a pencil and write these notes down along with me. So the title would be called The Anatomy of Chemical Equation. Now the key thing to remember, when we write symbolic chemical equations, they can be for either physical changes or chemical changes. So just because we use a chemical equation doesn't mean that it's always going to be for a chemical change. Let me show you an example, and then we'll break down some important terms related to that example. The example involves a compound called sodium carbonate, dissolved in water, reacting with another compound called aluminum chloride, which is also dissolved in water. When we put those two substances together, they react and they form a pretty common product, table salt, which is NaCl, sodium chloride, and they make a solid that's not soluble in water. We call that a precipitate, and its name is aluminum carbonate. Now, what you've seen me write here in black is an example of a symbolic chemical equation. Now let's go over the common features present in most examples of symbolic chemical equations. First, everything that's listed on the left-hand side of the arrow we call reactants. Anything that's listed on the right-hand side of the arrow are designated as products. This is true whether or not we're dealing with a physical change or a chemical change. The next key feature I want to highlight are coefficients. Coefficients are numbers placed in front of the formula of elements or compounds involved in a chemical equation. So a definition for a coefficient would be that it indicates how many of a particle are involved in a process. Now coefficients aren't the only numbers that you might see in this particular example. You probably also notice numbers written as subscripts, and that's exactly what they are called. They are called subscripts. And subscripts tell us something completely different. They indicate how many of a particle are in a given reactant or product. So in this example, this two in front of aluminum tells us that there are two aluminum atoms and the three on the outside of the parentheses tells us that there are three CO3 ions present. We'll learn more about ions later. The final piece I want to highlight right now deals with state symbols. State symbols are the symbols that you see in parentheses written as subscripts, and they tell us the state of matter that a particular substance is present in for a chemical or a physical change. The ones that you'll need to know, I'm going to list in the space right here. So state symbols that you will need to know. S means solid. L means liquid. G tells us it's a gas. And the one that's probably new for you is AQ, which means aqueous. That fundamentally means that the substance is dissolved in water. One final point of clarification that I know that students often have difficulty with when they're first being introduced to equations, how we symbolically represent matter, and in particular, subscripts and how we interpret subscripts. Let's go back to this chemical compound. 
aluminum carbonate. And I want to pay attention to the formula and its subscripts and think about how those subscripts tell us information about the number of atoms involved. This too only applies to the aluminum because it immediately follows the aluminum. So the way that we would interpret that is there are two aluminum atoms in one formula unit of Al2CO3, three, aluminum carbonate. Now this three is outside the parentheses of this particular particle, and it's a polyatomic ion, which we'll learn about later, called the carbonate ion. That three on the outside distributes to everything inside, so it fundamentally means there are three times whatever you see inside the parentheses. So the way that we would interpret that is that there are three times one carbon atoms in one formula unit, and there are three times three, or nine, oxygen atoms in one formula unit. So keep that in mind as you go through the exercises I'm going to ask you to do later this week. So just to recap, anything that's written on the left-hand side of the arrow, we call reactants. Anything on the right-hand side of the arrow are designated as products. Coefficients tell us how many of a particular particle are involved in a chemical process. And subscripts tell us how many of an atom or ion are involved in a particular formula unit of a core of an element.